In today's video, we're staying at the Andes Tokyo, which is considered one of the best Andes hotels in the world. We'll look at everything you need to know, share some parts of our vacation, and also why this hotel might be a skip for some people. Big favor before we dive in is to give us a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. And if you are new to the Sebi Funk channel and you like travel, then consider subscribing. Andaz is a luxury lifestyle hotel brand within the Hyatt portfolio. It sits alongside the crown jewel brand of Park Hyatt and it acts as two sides of the same coin. Park Hyatt's are more focused on refined luxury, while Andaz leans more vibrant and eclectic. One is about tranquility and elegance, the other is a reflection of culture and history. You see this right away the moment you step into the room. What's up guys, it's Sebastian, and today we're going to look at the Andes Tokyo. This is one of the best Hyatts in the world, and let's look at why. First off, the rooms are pretty interestingly designed. They're all based off origami and inspired by it. You'll see a lot of elements throughout. Even if the artwork, you kind of already see it, it's folded paper. Throughout the rest of the room and also the property, you'll see a lot of straight lines that remind you of paper. For example, all of the walls here, it's the intent. Beyond that, you also have a lot of wood tones and wood finishing. It's the whole paper mentality. Same with down here, lots of wood. This room is pretty much white as well as wood. We are in the king room with a... Huh? Is Tokyo Tower gone? Oh, they turned off. I didn't know they turned it off. We are in a king room with a Tokyo Tower view. They did turn it off though because it is near midnight. Or technically, I guess we're filming this at 12.15 a.m. We did try to get upgraded to the suite using a suite upgrade certificate, but it wasn't really possible because all the standard suites were sold out. They did have specialty suites, but that's not really an option. So even though we had Globalist, this was the only thing that was possible for our status. And over here, we have a TV. We have a bed over here, and also a lot of different remote control options for things like lights and also curtains. It is very analog. You just have them on and off, which I kind of like. Something about it I think is nice. As you can tell, we haven't tried out the bed yet, but I'll let future Sebi tell you how that goes. Over here is a gigantic couch. I can't really emphasize how big it is. I feel like you could actually lay two people like head to toe and they would fit. Four subsections and it's pretty sizable subsections. So one, And maybe not two people, maybe like one and a half, but still pretty big. If we want to do some work, it can either be over here or there's another little chair below. Again, more wood tones. I'm not really sure why, but I'm a big fan of the light. Coming over here, we have a few more different sections. I'm actually going to show you this before showing you this cool free part. Going with the whole paper theme, you can see that this opens up instead of sliding, it folds. Kind of cool to me. This is the bathroom, kind of a walk-in bathroom situation. You have a sink over here. Pretty standard for the most part. But day, it is automatic. All the items are from Aesop. I didn't even notice this originally, but there is a Dyson hair dryer, same one that Mandy uses at home. I do like that it's more subtle than yours at home. I think Mandy has a brighter color one. This is very sleek. Look. Mine is just bright gray. It's brighter looking. This is like very spate. This looks very technical. Like that's black. Yeah, it looks cool. Anyways, over here we have a ton of items that pretty much cover all your needs. There is a whole menu for things you can take and also request from them. Up here, down here are a ton of items you cannot take, which kind of tells you that it has been a problem in the past if they tell you that you cannot steal the electric kettle because that means that people probably did take it in the past. Same with the scale, power adapter, and yoga mat. I am kind of curious about the free weight set. I wonder if that was something to do with the shutdowns when people didn't really leave their rooms as much. But yeah, interesting to know. Continuing the wood theme, you have this box of accessories and tools that you can use. Pretty much everything and anything you need. I really like that they made it custom instead of just ordering the same thing from everyone else. So it fits in this whole box precisely. Even the Kleenex box is wood. There's a closet over here, not really too much going on, but it does the job, it's pretty nice. Lights, you have hangers, uh, some pretty hefty hangers, like giant blocks of wood. They're nice though, they feel great. There is a cutter down here. Again, you cannot take this, do not steal. Some slippers that you can wear through the room that you can keep if you want. It's kind of unique because there are polka dots. I think first probably we've seen with these ones. Laundry basket, wood themed. Last thing in this section is going to be this drawer, which is just laundry bags. One cool thing I really like is that they do have a lint roller 
as someone that films when they travel, it's nice to have a lint roller because otherwise I bring my own anyways. I kind of enjoy the mini one. Actually, I should probably get a mini one. Let's head to the shower. You do have a pretty sizable tub here if you want to relax. You can't really lay out as much because it is a circle, but still nice to chill. Maybe breath with something faster. There is a shower with a pretty big shower head. I think the largest I've actually seen in ever. It's way bigger than my hand, which is nice. So super excited to try this one. Future Sebi towards the end of the video will tell you how great this is because current Sebi is exhausted and needs a shower. So I'll put this back up for some more light. You can tell that a lot of the rooms here are pretty much the same size. Standard for the most part, it's more of a function of the view you have. There are some normal suites and then some super suites, but yeah, not really that many on this property. Over here is a gigantic cupboard with lots of different things. So first off, it's going to be a safe. Over here is a gigantic drawer for your stuff. Last but not least, there is this cool section over here, which opens up. For all Andes properties, the non-alcoholic beverages are free. Other items are paid, so don't take the beer and stuff unless you want to pay. But you have things like Coke, Coke Zero, sparkling water, juice, and also teas. You can be brought to something a bit warmer. There is a tea set over here, as well as an espresso machine down there, and lots of other options. Teas from Jane, Earl Grey, English breakfast, some green teas over here, tons of Nespresso pods, and also snacks. These are also free because they're not alcoholic. One awesome thing about the Andes is that there is a Camino happy hour that's free in the lobby from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. Whether you have top level globalist status or no status at all, you could join in. This includes a bunch of hors d'oeuvres and also unlimited drinks such as wine, sake, and of course juices, coffees, and teas. Even if you have dinner plans, this is a fun starting point to your night. They also do have some pretty tasty alcohol and Mandy can attest to this that the drinks can be pretty dangerous. Super friendly staff and great service, so two thumbs up. In terms of food, we really wanted sukiyaki for some reason, but it was probably a mistake. Let's show you what we ate and where we should have gone instead. So it was fine, but the main problem was the price, and there definitely are better options that are less geared towards tourists. Instead, I wish we went to Osakaya, which is renowned for the traditional approach to soba noodles and dates back to 1872. Definitely more of a cultural experience near Toronto Hills. Speaking of which, let's quickly talk about the area. Toronamon Hills used to be a pretty nondescript business district. It basically lacked any defining characteristics or attractions compared to places like Rapungi Hills. Toronamon Hills Murray Tower officially opened June 2014 and has now positioned itself as a global business hub. There's four towers, Murray is the main skyscraper of office space as well as the Andes and also retail shops. There's also a separate business tower, residential tower, and the last one is station tower which is probably the most photogenic and has a subway station, restaurants, grocery stores, and also Toronamon. If you go to the website, you'll see a Doraemon doppelganger called Toronamon who promises that he's just a tiger. He is a pretty cute guy though and I ended up getting a figurine while Mandy got a shirt and a notebook. There also are multiple Doraemons, I mean Toronomons, throughout the station tower to take pictures with and also a Toronomon store. Breakfast number two, pretty excited to try some new things and also go back to some good staples. I ended up getting the sunny side up eggs because I just haven't had sunny side up eggs in a bit and the eggs in Japan are always awesome. It's interesting because they do also offer soy sauce as part of the eggs. I think this is the first time I've ever had this. Let's give it a try. I guess I have had it as the onsen egg, but that feels different than this. Something about the eggs here, they're just amazing. I don't know if it's the process they have for raising the chickens or maybe the conditions they're in 
or something in that process makes the eggs taste better. It kind of feels like the eggs in the US are bland, but there's not much flavor to them compared to the ones here. Mainly saying it's free range chickens versus mass produce, which might be the difference. I'm just gonna dip some of my croissant in it because it sounds good in my head. Obviously, it depends on you, but I would probably skip the Japanese breakfast. Fella does a bit too much food and nothing really blew either of our minds. I'd stick with some other items like either the French toast or the eggs. Heading over to the croissant. One of the better croissants I've had. They do bake everything in-house, which is also super cool. A lot of other places would just buy pre-made stuff and then kind of heat it up. Not the case here. Hash browns are also pretty good. This is another pastry. Mmm. Apple turnover tastes amazing. I feel like a lot of the pastries they're really good at, which makes sense. I guess anything that requires a lot of technique. One of the favorites from yesterday is the Kira Bowl. Got another pretty big one today. Ironically, I think a bowl this size would already be like 30 bucks, maybe even 40. I ended up testing out some American items as well, if raw food isn't your thing in the morning. Sausage is fine, not really mind-blowing. I got bacon yesterday and I wasn't that impressed, but figured I'd give it a second shot because bacon's bacon. That's fine. I would not try this for the sake of trying it. It's not gonna be different than what I normally have. Some fruit. Even if you're not a fruit person or a cantaloupe person, I would definitely try some just because it's so much sweeter here. Same thing with dragon fruit, even though it looks a bit weird if you've never had it before. It's pretty tasty. Eggs, seafood, fruit, pastries, all amazing. Tons of great options. Would I pay retail for this? Maybe. It's about 60, 600 yen. So depending on currency exchange between 40 to $60, I think I would consider it. I think it would have to be maybe like a one-time thing. I don't think I would do it for every day of a stay. But if I was super hungry that day and really wanted some items, this is a good pick. We did get it through status though, which is nice. One great thing about Andaz is that there are a lot of amenities. Most of these are going to be on the 37th floor. This includes a pretty nice gym with a lot of new equipment, and you can also work out with a great view. There also is a pretty nice pool if you want to get some laps in, or if you're like Mandy, walk around photogenically. If you need a break, there is a sizable hot tub, which is super relaxing. There also is a carbonated hot tub, which is known as a soda spa, and definitely an interesting experience if you are curious what a Mentos might feel like. There also is a back area to cool off if you want normal water without the expectation of doing laps with the main pool. The locker rooms also have a ton of features. There's some massage chairs, a hot sauna, steam room, and a cold plunge. Another big focus of the property is art. You see this with the room, but also with the elevators when you come up to the hotel. Two subtle ones that you might not even notice are gigantic walnut tables in the lounge that were treated by George Nakashima, who is a world-renowned woodmaker. Lots of details of the table that can only be appreciated if you're there. With the leftover wood, he ended up making the tree chair that's in the lobby and acts as a statement piece in the middle of the room. One thing that I missed until we were leaving was the artwork above the check-in area. Definitely a lot going on here. Heading towards the rooms, if you keep going past the elevators, there's also a bunch of additional artwork. Also a ton of cool event spaces, so there's a cooking room and a tasting room. We didn't do anything in here, but it definitely looks cool. For one of our last dinners, we went to Ginza for Omi Beef. This involves a 7 minute walk to the train station, and then a 10 minute ride, and then a 5 minute walk from there. Even though Tokyo is a city, sometimes it's hard to remember how big it is, and even the closest district might take you 20 to 30 minutes to get to. This was our first time having Omi beef, and let me tell you, it was delicious. So I didn't know until this trip, but Omi is one of three Wagyu beef brands in Japan. Kobe is known for exceptional marbling and mountain your mouth texture. Matsusaka is more tender and rich flavor-wise. Omi is delicate with balanced marbling. After dinner, we went back to the hotel to the rooftop bar. Lots of cool drinks here, but you definitely are paying a premium. Still a great vibe though, and a great place to go if you are trying to get the view, but maybe you don't want to pay for the hotel. On the last day, we rushed back to Ginza to try to get some new glasses. Spent a bunch of time looking, but didn't really find any frames I liked. Nice. So instead, I found out that I could actually buy new lenses for my current frames. 
It is a lot cheaper and a great option if you have a new prescription, but you want to keep your current glasses. Overall, this is a great property and one I'd highly recommend. I think I'd give this a 10 out of 10. There are a few disadvantages, but it's not so about the hotel or the service, it's more so the selection of the location. If it is your first time in Tokyo, I think there are some better options that are going to be closer to the tourist attractions. This is more so if you're doing a staycation or if you've been a few times already. Main reason being that it is by Toronomon Hills, which is a nice area, but it's less convenient and just doesn't really go to Shibuya or a lot of the other cool neighborhoods as easily. We are kind of close to Ginza, but you're still looking at about a 20 minute walk or about a 12 to 15 minute transit ride. Still though, this is a great property, amazing service, great hard products, and awesome room. Definitely one of the best end dance hotels in the world. If you made it to this point, leave a red tower emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on the property? Property, and where do you typically stay when you visit Tokyo? Let me know and let everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you liked it. See you next time.